Okay, now that we are back, Dave, if you haven't hung up because of my two commercials, you know, we gotta we gotta make a living here somehow, Dave. So uh, <laughs> my, my friend, I wanna I wanna dig into uh, now what intrigued me um, about your life is all of the business successes that you have had. Before we do that, um, Karen Karen wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the, the actual book and the book title. Right, yeah, thanks, uh, Joe. And, and Dave, you and I were talking during the break about uh, you know pieces of the book that, that piqued my interest and, and one of them obviously was the title, uh, Come no, no, on, no, America. No, 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 no. What you told him was you went to the back page uh, of the book first. Well, I did. After I read the title, I'm like, well, what does he mean by that? <laughs> so I said, where is that chapter? It's the last chapter. So, you know, read the read the end first, right? So I would love to dig into that a little bit. And because I, like I said during the break, I found myself nodding in agreement uh, with almost all of what you were saying in, in that chapter because I, you know, kind of given given the state of our, our current events, um, I, it really resonated with me. Um, and one, one sentence in particular um, in the last chapter that I've highlighted uh, says, and this is you speaking to the, to the author, I'm, I'm worried that we in America don't think about how fortunate we've been, where we've come from and where we're going. We don't know how to work together or we have forgotten. Um, you know, and we look at what what were once trusted organizations, um, not so much anymore. So, talk to us a little bit about how you came to the the title of the book, and based on your experiences, kind of where you think we are now, and and what our outlook is relative to to unity. Well, the, the book was going to be called No Whining. <laughs> I like that too. <laughs> <laughs> My wife gave me a. a, a red leather sign and gold letter says no whining and it's been on my desk for 20 some years mm -hmm. and so Barry said well you know let's let's use that and I said well that suits me I mean just whatever you think is appropriate and the book publisher said that it's great but it, it doesn't it doesn't say exactly what this book is all about and it's, it's a negative thing no whining mm -hmm. So well, they came up with, and, and I agree, come on, America. And I think people are interpreting like, are you saying, come on, or uh, come on, America? You, you, it, it, what emphasis are you saying, come on, America? Yeah. Uh, but it's, 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 it's saying let's really uh, understand where we are, who we are, and, and where we're going. I mean, no matter who we listen to on TV or in the newspapers. Mm -hmm. And I and I think we are divided and purposely divided because of politics. And that's the, one of the beauties of, of our democracy, and that um, it sells well overseas when you got 22 people running for president. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you you know, Dave, when when I read the the title and then got about halfway through the book, to me, come on, was this inspirational thought, right? Let's let's mm -hmm. get together, let's get some stuff done. Dave's the kind of guy, and I, you know, and I I know you're getting a little up in age, but I bet you still do this. You wake up in the morning and say, okay, what am I going to do today? You know, <laughs> and so that's just what I got from this was let's go let's let's get some stuff done um and let's let's spire uh people around us that's kind of how i i interpreted this would, would i be missing by uh, would i be missing the mark with that no that's exactly right and it gets down to what i've experienced in life people want to know people face to face eyeball to eyeball and and all this technology is just taking us away from being uh, personal and you can read people, their body language or their eyes or whether they're interested or not interested. And on a computer, you can't do this. And it's, I mean, a computer has its, its purpose, but I've told so many people that, that uh, you really want to uh, make this happen. Some idea they have, and that person you've been talking to, I said, get on a plane and fly and look at them face to face. Mm. Um, and and I, I've always had that philosophy, it's face yeah. to face. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's what we're missing. Yeah. So, okay, now, Dave, we, we, we've only got about 15 minutes left in this show, and we're not even halfway through the book. So, right. so, <laughs> so I won't talk as much. <laughs> so, <laughs> 
<laughs> no, maybe, no, maybe I you. should talk like <laughs> Joe, so, we want to hear him. <laughs> so, so I'm going to, let, let's try and run through some of this stuff so we can get through as much as possible, okay? okay. So, so talk a little bit about, I, I'm in a chapter where it talks about taking a risk, you know, and, I, and I'm reading the fact that you're 30 years old and you, have, you decided to buy the machinery to, to create a weaving mill. Um, to, talk just a little bit about, because to me, in my mind, all of us small business people have the moment we remember we first decided we're going to do this, right? Talk a little bit about your thought in that regard. Well, I was out on the road selling fabric and all over America, then we were traveling internationally and, and found competition, and they are undercutting you in price, and you understand you know, competition is competition, but then you really start learning that they have their own direct vertical mill. And we are converters, meaning we buy from big mills and sell to small upholstery operations all over. And so I said the only way we're going to really grow is, is to buy a mill. A mill came up for sale that was in the apparel business, and that uh, I bought it, and my family wasn't that interested in it. <laughs> and I just I did it, and it's it is a did they did they dis happened. did they did they discourage you from doing it, or did they embrace it? Well, they were intrigued. Uh, they said, "You don't know a thing about manufacturing. You don't know anything <laughs> about machinery. You don't even know how to turn it on." They might be right about that at the time. Right? <laughs> You're totally right. <laughs> well, but you were going to figure it out. Right. <laughs> so, let, let, Dave, we, we've got to take another break. When we come back, um, let's dig in to um, the I, – I don't know how else to describe it, but I think you changed the direction of High Point with your uh, vision. Um, matter of fact, I'm reading this section. At the time, in the mid-1970s, the idea of renovating an old building – would have been both both venturous and innovative. And what we're talking about is um, you renovating the old Tompkins Furniture Company in uh, downtown High Point and turning it, 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 it is the start of High Point becoming a uh, a furniture, what, what do I want to call it? A, a, a mecca. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Furniture I mean, market wor mecca. Wor world renowned. World so, mm -hmm. so, so let's take a break. When we come back, uh, let's dig into that. Okay. You are listening to Local Biz Now. I am Joe Vagdon, and I am talking with the ambassador of Estonia, which we haven't even got there yet, Karen. We need I mean, two hours. Dave Phillips. If it's Friday morning, we're talking to interesting people. We'll be right back. And we are back. You are listening to Local Biz Now. I am Joe Vagnone, and I am here with my co-host for the entire month, Karen Bentley of Bentley Consulting. We have on the phone Ambassador Dave Phillips. Dave, are you there, my friend? I am, I am here. Now, Dave, you and I don't know each other, so let me just give you a little bit of prep on the show. This entire show, which I've been doing for a little over six years, is totally designed and set up to make fun of Joe. So feel free to, <laughs> to uh, jump in at any time and disagree with me or, <laughs> or correct me anytime you want, sir. So, so uh, I, I appreciate so much you, you calling in. Thank you so much. You will. You will. So, so let me let me do an intro on you. Let me try and do this, um, and I, I don't think I'm going to do it justice. But I just found this phenomenal. And let me start with this: Dave's life is an American success story, from disability to achievement and acc acc acclaim. His journey teaches and valuable lessons to those just starting out, and it confirms the truth of freedom, power for us all. He is a good friend and also an inspiration. And that was written at the front of your book by Mitt Romney, Republican presidential nominee and governor of Massachusetts. I'm not done. Dave served North Carolina as... Uh, energy secretary, uh, uh, energetic, excuse me, secretary of commerce, who helped me recruit hundreds of thousands of new jobs from all over the world. Dave is a fireball. That is from Governor James Hunt. Another one. It has been my honor and privilege to work with Dave, and and I enjoy his friendship. Dave and Kay, which is your wife, are family friends. 
uh, truly to truly understand his success and ambitions, you have to understand his love for community. Uh, that is uh, James Martin, governor of North Carolina. Uh, I got one more. And, the, and, and listen, I could probably read for the entire show the people that have spoke about you, um, Dave. It is just simply remarkable. Uh, whether you or Dave will be impressed um, with his full life of challenges, exciting experiences, contributions to the world. His growth mindset has driven him to constant pursuit of success and happiness. Truly an outstanding example for all of us. And that was from uh, Kelly King, the chairman and CEO of uh, BB&T Corporation. I, I, I must tell you, Dave, it is just impressive. There is no other way and, and I could continue. There's no other way to introduce you than to say the people that you have known in your life and that think so much of you um, is just uh, inspirational. I also... I also look at the forward of your book, and again, we, we're, we're only in page three of the book, right, buddy? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it is just phenomenal. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Nito uh, Cuban, I hope I'm saying that correctly, the president of High Point University says, if you don't know Dave Phillips, you will be inspired by his intense determination and curiosity. And he goes on to talk about his uh, joy and affection for you. And um, he ends it with... Um, the fact that um, your book is full of successes and it is framed in a significant uh, life. And so, so, so I introduce uh, Dave Phillips in that way, Dave, by saying, wow, man, I, I mean, uh, I, I didn't even get to the third page of the book and I was already impressed that, that this guy has lived a full life. Um, w walk me through your thoughts on even allowing this book to be written. Written, right I mean, it, it 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 really is a, a remarkable uh, sort of um, bullet point of your of your life if I could, if I could put it that way <laughs> well it, 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 a lady in high point who writes a, a full page uh, column every Sunday of the high point enterprise about people and about civic organizations and, and what's going on in high point not a social calendar and and, and not political at all. And she has taught all of us at High Point, all these different community groups who are doing great job uh, in their neighborhood. And that, uh, so it's, 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 we've all gotten to know her over the, over the last decade. And she uh, is, is what I've called in her Sunday column, a uh, fair. And she's not trying to be negative or anything. And she approached me and said, would you... She said, I want to write a book. Would you let me write about you and your stories? Because she said, I've heard some of them. And I, and I, at first, it made me very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she came to my office, and, it, and so we looked, and I, and I said, well, I, I, I'm honored, but how you've never written a book before. What's it gonna, what do you think it's going to be like? Well, anyway, I didn't agree originally, and then she came back with a, a recorder, and I did, and I said, I just don't want this recorder. <laughs> just <laughs> so we did face to face over a long period of time, and never on the telephone, and not in writing. And she pieced all this together because I, I don't spend a whole lot of time at High Point. Well, and, and you know what's interesting is th I, I felt that, right? In the book, she says you wanted to meet face-to-face, one-on-one, which sort of defines you, right? Um, and, and as you're reading the book, you can tell she's kind of got to pull some stuff out of you, right? So, so <laughs> it, did, did I interpret that correctly, that she was kind of squeezing from time to time? <laughs> Absolutely. That's what makes you nervous, I hope. Because she knows everything. I mean, she knows all the gossip. <laughs> and, and, uh, but I, I just, I, I, I think it, it, it came out where it's, it's, it's fair. 
I, I got to be honest with you. I do not. I, I read about a hundred books um, in the last year and a half or so, and I do not read a lot of biographies. I I was. It was not my intention to read this book. It was your uh, publisher that actually called me and said, "Hey, will you will you do me a favor and read this show? It's just a unique gentleman with a unique life." And I, you know, I thought, "Oh gosh, all right, I'll, I'll you know, I'll do it." But I, I mean, what can this guy be? Some high point? Oh, come on. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> come on, give me a break. And I got to be honest with you, buddy. I, I I started reading this, and it just, it it is, it is amazing. And I can't wait to get to get into some of this stuff. But it is amazing all of the things that you've done in your life. I mean, do you look back and say, "Wow, I can't believe I did that," or did you always find yourself knowing that you were just going to keep continuing to reinvent yourself? H how does that happen? You know, walk me through looking back at this. Well, I, I've always been curious, and I'm always willing to ask a lot of questions. I drive some people crazy. And then I, I, I walk into a room, my wife says, you know, aren't you going to get me a drink? And I'm sitting there talking to somebody else standing. And, that, um, and I want to know who they are, where they're from, what they do. And so I'm, I just love meeting people, talking to them, all these different experiences that we all have. And through life, I just... I just met different people, and they said, let's go and do this together, or would you do this? And I, and I have, and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. So, so uh, okay, so now it's our turn, right? now. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's get started. The, the first question I've got is, because I wasn't sure, your upbringing, w w did your father have some wealth? It seems like he had some connections and relationships that would put you sort of in the upper middle class. It, it, am I interpreting that correctly? You are. You are. He... Uh he started off as a fabric salesman from Virginia and moved to High Point in the 20s and, and sold fabric to mm -hmm. the furniture manufacturers. Okay, and, and so, he, so he did give you the privilege of starting off in, in, a, in a good foundation. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so now let me read this from the book. As I grew... My leg did not grow properly above or below the knee. As a child, I had to wear a six-inch build-up shoe. But having a built-up shoe was not the worst thing. Uh, and, and, and walk me through that, right? Because I can already tell, you know, page five of the book, this is a guy that was not going to let this, this um, obvious problem affect him at, a, at an early age. W walk through what it's like to have that, that uh, disability. Well, I thought a lot about that over the years, and I didn't have a bad feeling. I knew it was unusual, and people talked about it, curious, but I I was born with it. I grew up with a, a, a shoe slowly being built up because my leg did not grow. But before then, my left foot was out, uh, pointed to the left. It wasn't pointed in, it was to the left. And it had three toes, and it just it was a birth defect. And they, uh, they slowly... Uh, first few years, uh, move the leg so it's straight, and then, uh, but I had this built-up shoe, because uh, over over 14 years, it got to be where it was six inches. And and what I found, I couldn't help but laugh, because you put in the book, uh, the book, but I could kick a football really good. <laughs> <laughs> so I could just tell, this is a positive guy, right? He, he is He's going to find the positive in that. And then I go a little bit further in the book, and then I find out that you had a heart disease. I mean, if if, if you don't have enough challenges growing up, right, you, you've got a heart disease. So, so talk about your life growing up and knowing that you just had these physical issues issues that you had to deal with well rheumatic fever and that was a scary dangerous thing back then and i have to sit in my home and really couldn't even go downstairs i had to sit upstairs because he said the exertion of the heart even if you walk up down the steps so for a long period of time i lived upstairs in our home and didn't go to school didn't do anything didn't couldn't see my friends every now and then they let some come upstairs, but they wanted me very quiet, and I took a lot of penicillin, and it took months. Hmm. What did so, you do during that time? What were you thinking? Do you remember what you were thinking at that time? Oh, yeah. I can see myself in the bed, and that uh, Mom and Dad had a, a TV set, 
and I sat in there and walked, saw all the silly shows that we've all talked about for years, and, and that, um, and I, but the thing that's in the book that, that scares the willies out of everybody uh, was Mom knew I loved sheep, and I, I wish, and anyway, bought me a pistol. Yep. And there, there was a porch, and I go out on the porch, and Mom would put up a, 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 a target on a tree, and I'd shoot at that target. Well, that got boring as a dickens after. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> there's a fellow named Pee Wee who worked at our a yard and garden, and, and, and he's just, uh, everybody loved Pee Wee. Anyway, Pee Wee came walking by one day, and he had been working on the lawn board, had a ball glass of jar, um, and get some gasoline. I said, Pee Wee, would you do me a favor? Uh, and I said, is the jar empty? And he said, it is. And I said, would you hold it out and see if I can shoot it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I've, 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 I've been haunted by that ever since. <laughs> you know, this book could have been different if that, <laughs> if that shot would have been different. <laughs> well, I shot several, and he used up his uh, uh Containers and uh, my mom found some debris uh, a few days later. And <laughs> obviously, started asking a lot of questions and took my pistol away. <laughs> <laughs> but but you talk in the book that that was something that, that that was your first what you believe to be success. You got a feel for what success looked like because you became quite good at that. Became good at it and then skeet shooting. Uh, I, I had a lot of friends or friends of my uh, parents who went out to a certain skeet field there in High Point, and I started shooting at a very young age, shooting skeet with with my um, built-up sheet. So I was already comfortable shooting, and then it, 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 it just I kept on shooting for years and loved it. Yeah, I, I could I could tell. But the thing that inspired me was when you defined this is a moment that I realize I can succeed. This, this is something I'm good at, and um, it started in your mind knowing what success looks like in your mind. It, is that a, is that a fair way to to to, to uh, interpret that? Fair enough, because I was just just a kid sitting in a room wondering what all the other kids were doing, and uh, all of a sudden this became very important to me as to I was able to become successful. Uh, successful meaning a break in the jar or shooting ski. Right, right. I went to a lot of tournaments. I started at a very young age going to tournaments. And all the people took me to these tournaments. I mean, it was fabulous. It wasn't really my mom and dad. So so now I, I'm, I'm, I'm here at Chapter 4, and we talk about you going to to uh, boarding school. Walk me through that. That's really not a common thing anymore. Most of us don't know what that's like. Well, it, it's a complete change, and, uh, and that's one of the reasons my parents, uh, I, I call it, sent me off. Is There's some boarding schools here in the South, but they sent me all the way to Connecticut and because they had a friend in New York whose son was going there. And I don't know if I've ever heard of it. <laughs> but now, you know, it's, it's, well, anyway, I got accepted, and that was great. And uh, it, it's a whole new group of people that I had a leg, and they didn't know I had an artificial leg mm -hmm. until, you know, I couldn't play football or something like that. But it just, it made, it's changed my life to get away and have my own identity and to have new friends and uh, I'm forever grateful. Very smart thing. So, so the title of the, of the chapter is "Accidental Yankee." So, I'm I'm curious. Did you did you find yourself um, comfortable in that northern setting, or did you find yourself yearning to get back to the south? It, or, or was there no difference in your eyes? I felt accepted, and I I uh, I, I, mean, I, I really felt with the, the masters. You lived in these houses that you had a couple that lived in the house. So it was very homey. It wasn't big old cold dorms. Right. And they, 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 there were a few Southerners, like a handful, but they're all from, <laughs> <laughs> I called them Yankees. 
<laughs> so, so th there's a story uh, in the book that that you talk about, it, which is one I thought you lived in that sort of an upper middle class home. You, you are your family has a um, a blue marlin re tr release tournament that that you have up up in. Um, your, your, your family's Hadris home, and you talk about the people that were there, uh, you know, the Texas governor, uh, <laughs> you, you know, uh, John uh -huh. Conley uh -huh. w was there, uh, Jimmy Roosevelt, the son of Franklin Delano Roosevelt, um, and you talk about the story that Conley tells. C can you tell that story to the people? I just, it was intriguing because it gave me some insight into this life that you lived because it truly was an interesting life uh, from a very early age. Well, it's because of my father, of course, that he loved to fish and, and he loved to go up down the uh, East Coast and found out that off the coast of North Carolina is fabulous fishing for blue marlin. You've got to go far enough out. And not sailfish, but blue marlin. And that, uh, so he and a group got together and that and they were from kind of all over the East Coast because they all know each other going into different ports fishing. And it turned out that our next door neighbor who dad knew his father was, was probably his best friend. The son wanted to go down there and, and, and go fishing. So the whole crowd went down and the son uh, saw that, that these boats they had down there couldn't even go out through the uh, bad weather because of the waves and, and they're all straight hull boats and this guy <laughs> he was in the hosier business and he said well he can make a boat with a flared hull out of fiberglass never been done before well that was the beginning of Hatteras Yachts. <laughs> he, he came back to High Point and made this yacht at an old filling station at 41 footer and, and dad was chairman of the board and willis was president and and all of a sudden they launched this boat company and that it's just all because of that one episode in hatteras north carolina hmm. <laughs> that is interesting <laughs> so 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 um let, let's do this let's take a break and then and i want to get into um uh, the, the chapter that talks about taking risk. It, it is, as a small business guy, it is the one area that um, I find myself um, reading over and um, trying to understand your step-by-step -step approach to uh, starting your business in, in High Point. So let's take a break and we'll come back and we are continue to talk with uh, Ambassador Dave Phillips. You are listening to Local Biz Now. I am Joe Vagnon. If it's Friday morning, you're Business Matters. We'll be right back. In Statesville. And we're back. You are listening to WSIC. Uh, I am Joe Vagnone, and this is Local Biz Now. And we are talking with the uh, Ambassador of Astoria, David Phillips. And, Dave, we've got so much to cover and no time to do it. So let's – and I'll let you just kind of lump it all together, take it in any direction you want to take it in. But I really – I want you to talk about starting, uh, let's call it the Market Square, you know, the, the renovation of, of the uh, – old warehouse into the furniture mart um to talk a little bit about that because it really was it was innovative for the south right um and it was innovative for the for the furniture market in general C can you talk a little bit about that uh, i can and it's it's uh, an old building turn of the century a big uh, building a thomas and furniture company i came back from a show in san francisco and these were old buildings, as is San Francisco, and they're old buildings, and they restore these old buildings. They use them, and I was driving to work the next day, and there's a certain way I go, and I passed this building my entire career. And there was just hit me. These are these are exactly what I saw yesterday in San Francisco. And Bill Tomlin's son, uh, he and his brother, um, I just called him up, and I said, I've got of an idea, can I come by and express it to you? Well, he thought I was crazy. And, he, and I kind of thought I was crazy. So it's just... You know, <laughs> but to talk and find and explore, it, it, that's what it's all 
all about. I mean, mm-hmm. he could have very well said no, or I could have walked all through it and said, I'm not sure this is going to work. But it, it, he agreed his company needed to move into uh, a more modern space instead of all the floors. And, uh, but he had the big smokestack. He had the, the water tower. I mean, it's just a beautiful old building. And we started off, uh, we're two blocks from the main buildings downtown, and uh, people said, well, I just, you're, you're just, you're not in the main traffic and coming all the way over there to see this stuff. And so what evolved, we got one major company, and then they, they all started coming, the decorators. It's a, it's a cut above regular furniture. It's, it's kind of a design decorator center. So it became very very successful in a very short period of time. Now, did, 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 it, huh? did, did you see it, Dave, as, as a very big calculated risk, or did you believe um, this is a no-brainer because there's nothing like this in the area and the, and the market will pick up on it quick? I mean, how, what was your thoughts when, when you were putting it together? Oh, I thought it's, it's, it's a, a calculated risk. Uh, if I could buy it cheap enough, then I could rent space cheaper than the competition downtown and uh so uh, it, it 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 took me some time to find the first tenant who was willing to uh take that gamble i mean it has old wooden floors and has exposed pipes and all that sort of stuff and right there was one very prominent company who said all right we'll do it and i went off out of the out of the uh, town because i knew all the companies and walking the halls of the market for years and and there's a company that never came to High Point because they didn't have to. They were so prominent and very upper end. And I just called them up one day and I said, uh, so anyway, I talked him into coming to High Point and showed him the space. And he loved it. And that's when he signed up, then it became uh, very successful very quickly. And, and you also talk in the book that, that, that at some point in, in this process, this temporary space uh, became very, very unique and a rare opportunity. Can you can you talk briefly about that as well? I can. This this, this building had a, a a basement area, and this is it was dark, and it's a basement, and it's big, and uh, the, the tenants um, said to me one day, we we would like to come, but we don't want to sign a five-year lease. We know we're, we're willing to test it out. Or, and that, so we just hung draperies between uh, posts, and they would take uh, a small amount, and they said, you know, we'll pay you twice as much, and we just want to come and test the high point market and see if our stuff will sell. And that and statement, we'll pay twice as much. To move into, and that's uh, and that statement. Dave, in that statement, uh, we'll pay twice as much work for you, dude. <laughs> so, okay, Dave, we've only got a couple minutes left, but I- I'm looking at these photos of who's who in our political uh, arena over the years, and, and you you are with them. I- I'd like you to give me a brief thought with some of these people in the photos. Let's start with Mitt Romney. What What's, what's your thought in relationship with Mitt? Uh, Mitt asked me to get involved in his campaign. And that's where I really got to know him. Spent a lot of time with him and admire him so much. He's a quality, quality individual. Condoleezza Rice, I see you're in a photo, and also your wife as well. Well, she was uh, Secretary of State when I was an ambassador to Estonia. She she swore me in. Okay. Uh, I noticed that you're walking with George Bush a W. Uh, what kind of relationship did you have with him? Very close. Uh, George W. Uh, I worked for him as ambassador, but I had gotten to know him because of his father, George H.W., and because I uh, spent a lot of time with him. And this was in politics, and they, he's been in our home, and so I felt comfortable. Yeah, with he, those he does seem like a cool guy, you know. I don't <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, um, you're standing next to uh, FBI Director, former F- FBI Director Robert Mueller. Oh, uh, you've heard about him recently, haven't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> He was uh, head of the FBI when he came to Europe for a, a, a tour and what was happening in our our country of Estonia and our hometown of Tallinn was it was the first time that all the FBI folks in 
Europe gathered together in one location to have a, a conference, a, a, a meeting. And so I helped arrange all that. And, and so that's where I got to know him. Dave, Dave, th- th- thank you so much, Dave. We simply ran out of time. I, I, I'd love to get you back and finish the other half of the book, my friend. We have so much more we could talk to you about. It has been an honor talking with you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm honored to talk to you all. You've been talking with the ambassador of Estonia, Dave Phillips. It is a life that is phenomenal. If it's Friday morning, your business matters. Karen, thank you so much for being here this month. We really do appreciate it. Thank you, Joe. It's been great. We'll talk with you next week.